The lockdown layout was a great project, but now it's time to step things up a gear. Join me as I build a full-size double O-gauge multi-scene layout from start to finish. Let the build commence. The Hatton's Class 66s are ready for duty. In this episode, I'll be covering how I built the first stage of the baseboards for the scenic river section of the new modular build. In episode two, I'll be covering how I add the vertical extent for the two separate track level heights. Hello folks, Paul here, UK Rails and More. Hope you're all keeping safe and well and having a good weekend. Um, just to let you know, uh, good day today. Uh, well, it was a good day the other day actually, but rain stopped play. Uh, the baseboards have, uh, have arrived uh, the other day, so I'm able to crack on with them. Uh, and also some other tools and kit that I needed to buy as well. Um, so yeah, I was just gonna uh, give you a quick rundown of the uh, items I'll be using for building the baseboards um, for the modular layouts. Um, if you've not seen any of my other videos, please check out the uh, the other videos on the layout bin, build the plans, the ideas, and also there's a load of reviews as well. Uh, some of the stock and building up for this new modular layout. I thought I'd focus the video uh, for anyone who may be thinking of building their own uh, baseboards as well and haven't done that before. So the tools I'll be uh, using for the build uh, is a decent power drill um, and uh, appropriate bits. Uh, I'm gonna be using the uh, G clamps as well, a couple of those. Uh, I'll be using those for a couple of things. Uh, one for um, once I actually do the uh, glue the uh, the battens to the main baseboard, they'll help keep that in place. Uh, and also I'll be using it just when I'm sawing through the wood uh, on the end to stop that kind of bouncing about. Uh, and I'll use it for that as well. Uh, just a, a, a set square, just to make sure that when we're building, when I'm making any uh, measurements to cut the wood, I've got a nice. Nice uh, straight edge there, and obviously that's important. That you, you're measuring it off a straight edge as well. Um, obviously, tape measure, pencil, uh, some wood glue as well for, for uh, bonding the edges. Uh, some screws. So the ones I'm going to be using are uh, four mil by twenty five mil, and there I'm going to be using those to attach the baseboard to the battens and glue it as well with the Gorilla Glue. Uh, and also the uh, some of these, so these are four by forty-five mil. And I was going to use those for um, fixing the actual battens to each other. Uh, other than that, there's a saw. So hand saw. I did been really make a start on this build the other day, uh, and I used a hand saw, just carefully measured out and used a saw. Uh, I had ordered a jigsaw, but uh, they messed up the order slightly on that one, so uh, that's due today. So the rest of the sawing I'm going to do uh, with that. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, plan is I'll uh, do a series of photographs, uh, little bits of video, and then bring you back at various points to show you uh, sort of key little tips I've got. Uh, okay, so uh, hope you enjoy it if, uh, if you've not done that before, uh, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Okay folks, welcome back. Uh, so the first stage was all about getting the wood into the right size. Uh, I'd bought it in eight foot by four foot sheets of uh, nine millimeter hardwood plywood. Uh, I had to hand saw it because uh, I'd not got the uh, jigsaw as yet. And the first stage was getting into four foot by two foot, which I was gonna use as a standard type size so I could get that in and out of the loft okay. Uh, so yeah, first stage with the uh, saw, I'm just gonna do this as a bit of a a commentary but it was all about marking it out nice and level with a set square uh, you go there's a nine millimeter thickness so i thought that would give a nice bit of strength really so uh, possibly reduce some of the batting that i needed to do for it okay so yeah uh, measuring it out this is i'd already cut into four foot by uh two foot and i was, I was measuring out to uh, to cut it into the smaller sizes uh, using that set square marking it out with a pencil 
uh, when using a set square it's important that the reference point of wood is very accurate so uh, that you've, you've got a good start and then it was just a case of, um, of uh, making a nice base so I could start the cut trying to get everything level obviously nice cup of tea helps a lot in these kind of DIY projects so there we go starting doing the sawing um, and uh, important to try and get it straight the way I've just used a G clamp uh, on the cut that I've made so it stops that wood bouncing about up and down uh, which uh, which just helps get that nice even cut uh, there's some details of the uh, 9mm plywood I got hardwood plywood you can use smaller sizes but that's the uh, the one I chose to use and there you go 8 foot 4 so I cut that into 4 foot by 2 foot so there we've got the uh, the nice edge. I've cut one of them down a bit smaller. A little bit of a scenic section of the uh, honeybees working hard in the garden. Uh, just to uh, break what can be the monotony of a baseboard video. So yeah, working hard in the uh, nice UK weather we've had, the heat wave. Full bags of, uh, of pollen there on his legs, on the leg sacks. Anyway, enough of the bees, back to the real work. Okay, so yeah, there's the uh, set square that I've used, tape measure and pencil. Right, what were we doing here? Okay, yeah, that's just uh, just marked out with the pencil. Ready for the cut, the saw in action. Apologies if there's some duplication here. Of, uh, I've tried to do it over a period of times. Okay, yeah, and that's just using uh, the G clamp uh, on the edges. And if you use a piece of chipboard or any other kind of wood, it stops marking the hardwood there because it spreads out that load. And there you go, there's two four foot by two foot uh, pieces that are cut nice and true, nice and level. And they're going to be ready for battening, which is the next stage. Okay, so this is the battening wood I've used, the smooth timber. And again, it's just going to be a case of, uh, of marking that out to be in the same size and getting a, a nice uh, square cut onto that. The timber to start off with is machined, so we're going to get a nice true start to to make now, I may be over engineering it to some people but I'd, I just like to get these baseboards nice and uh, done there's some clouds showing some thunderstorms which uh, ended up stopping play a little bit later on in the day and there's one of the nice pieces cut off uh, to the marking that I've made there so next it was a case of just uh, adding on the battening onto the piece of wood to check that I had a nice smooth edge and I used the G clamps to do this uh, to make sure that there we go. So I've got a nice smooth edge, which is more important really for the front end of it. The back end is not so important uh, because this is the end you're gonna see and I just like that nice and tidy. Birds busy in the trees and the feeders whilst we're doing that. There he is. Keep the sparrows happy. And back to it. So there we go. We're measuring out now where we're going to be actually screwing the uh, upper piece onto the, the battens. So it's a case of working out the, uh, the measurements. There's many different ways to do this. It's just a case of trying to work out what works for you. Uh, now the, the battening wood is uh, 18 mil. So I've marked out nine mil from the edge to get that nice and central. And obviously that's very important that you've, uh, you've got the wood is very close to the edge anyway when you're dealing with relatively uh, narrow measurements. Okay folks, welcome back. If you are enjoying the video, I'd be really grateful if you could just give it a thumbs up uh, or even consider subscribing if you want to watch the full journey from the start. Okay folks, so uh, day two now. So it was a case of measuring out some more of the baseboards to cut into that uh, four foot by two foot section, which I'll be using for the, uh, the modular layout along with some uh, one foot by four foot sections. Okay, there's the details of the, uh, the wood that I'll be using again for this one. Uh, good little tip, mark out with numbers uh, before you make the cuts or certainly immediately afterwards. Uh, and it just helps when you're putting those modules together in the future, you know exactly which ones are going together so that you've got an ideal match and you've not got uh, gaps. Um, obviously, just before making the cut, I'm uh, using appropriate items such as toolbox, paint tins, buckets, 
uh, whatever you need really just to try and equalize the height so that you're not going to uh, get any uh, any serious sagging or lifting when you actually complete the cut okay uh, using the G clamps again just to uh, make that nice and secure uh, good tip really important use one of these a circuit breaker before using any power tools and the appropriate uh, safety equipment Okay, I had a visitor to the uh, modular build there, tired racing pigeon, uh, turned up. Uh, how it knew to come, uh, I do not know. However, I was able to give it some bird food just to restore its energy levels uh, prior to either continuing its race or wherever its onward journey takes it. Okay, so the next stage was attaching the battening to the uh, hardwood uh, sheets. Uh, basically drilling the holes out and also countersinking them so we have a nice flush surface afterwards. Uh, important to get your measurements right here uh, just so that we can uh, obviously we glue that and we'll also screw that as well but we want that to be accurate so we've not got screws uh, coming out the side of the wood etc. So any time you spend here uh, is well worth it pays dividends. Uh, using the G clamp just to hold things in place uh, and there you can see where I've used one of the screws just to attach two pieces of the battening. Okay, try and make sure there's uh, there's no real gaps um, and that all of the battening wood is very close to the edge of the hardwood sheets uh, and that will just help with the uh, the accuracy that you've got a good a good firm fix and then I've used their uh, weights here, various weights to just make sure that that stays on for approximately 20 minutes although I did leave it for a bit longer. Uh, just to make sure that we had a, a good, uh, real good bond. Okay, just for anyone who's new to the channel uh, and not already aware, then uh, I'm building a modular double O gauge layout. Uh, it's going to involve a scenic river section. It's going to involve peak forest type quarry sections. Uh, it's going to involve, involve a town and city uh, section. It's also going to involve a preservation line and also a DRS TMD, so quite a bit to go there. Uh, the idea is it should be built uh, all uh, modular so that I can complete individual sections. I'll be able to do some garden running uh, in the meantime, and then eventually they will all form together to form one rather big uh, loft layout where I can run everything as one full layout. Um, if you want to see any of the ideas of the planning that's gone behind it or my initial ideas, I uh, have also done some recent videos on uh, the big idea and the plans to date, etc. So please check them out. Uh, it will be influenced by certain preservation lines, such as the East Lanks Railway, um, and also a lot of the quarries around Buxton. Uh, so I've also done peak forest videos and things as well to, uh, to have a look at. So please check those out if you uh, wish to find out a bit more. Okay, so there's the, uh, the first two modules. Uh, time for some lunch. Okay guys, so uh, energy levels restored, it was time to uh, do a bit more cutting. Okay, so I've braced uh, a number of sections of battening together now, uh, just to cut them all together, making sure they're nice and straight. Uh, and here you can see one of the one foot sections, a four foot by one foot. Um, basically again, counter drilled and counter sunk, ready for the screws. And I've got the battens. Now this one's gonna form part of the higher elevation, um, part of the layout at the back of the river section. So I'll explain a bit more about that later on. Uh, but yeah, it was a case of just putting all of it together, checking it all fitted. So I know because I've G-clamped them all together, the battens in the middle, those small cross sections, are all 100% exactly the same, or near as damn it. Uh, so there we go. Uh, we've centred them, uh, measured them out in the centre of the piece of wood. Uh, again, measuring out that 9 millimeter so that we're going to get the screw coming out centered on the uh, on the other side as it screws into the batten and checking it all uh, matches nicely the, uh, the the wood that it's going to go on to now what i do is i only uh, screw them in halfway through to start off with and then check it's all nicely in alignment before them screwing them in fully um, i've not used glue on the battening at this point 
Um, I wanted to not be rushed into uh, into trying to get everything in while that glue set. So I wanted to just uh, set everything nice and tight to start off with. Um, because what I'm going to probably do is attach the hardwood uh, plywood base to it. And then that will be glued and screwed. So everything will be bonded anyway there. Okay, and there's the uh, completed four modules. So this is the river scenic section. I've got the two foot by four foot pieces at the front, and then I've got the one foot by four foot at the back. Uh, the next bit to do is gonna be quite interesting because this is where the real work comes uh, because um, I'm gonna be having two separate flight levels. And for those who are not aware, I'm gonna be having two lines crossing each other and also crossing a river at thereabouts the same location. So that's gonna be quite a challenge working out all of the elevations. Uh, so again, it's gonna be back to the, the, the planning section, uh, working out the exact cross bed of, uh, of where I actually want the lines to go, because obviously that's gonna be the most important thing to start off with. And then once I've got that penciled on, so I know where everything, where everything is, uh, then I can start working out the elevations. Now the piece you're looking at here, uh, it probably won't be like that uh, with the board on top. What I'm probably going to do, as I think I demonstrate in a moment, is take that top board off and put that underneath and attach it effectively upside down. So here we're going taking it off. Now the idea is with that, I'll have the hardwood to keep everything that will be drilled, glued and screwed into that bottom section. Um, but And that will keep everything nice and tight. Uh, but then what it'll allow me to do is I'll be able to build stanchions up from that frame, again, screwed and glued on. Uh, and then that will allow me to build the elevated level that I can split the elevations on one of those uh, one foot by four foot sections. I could have it all on the same level uh, or I could have it part at different angles. So that's stuff that I'm all going to have to work out at that next key planning stage. Uh, and I will be doing another build video uh, just to show you how all of that lot goes and uh, once I've put it all together. So before that, yeah, it's going to be uh, back to the planning out, uh, looking at that. Thanks very much to everyone who commented uh, with uh, feedback about my change of plans and possible ideas. Uh, that's really appreciated. It's great to have ideas off, uh, off you guys as well that can, uh, can help me and uh, check that I'm going in the right direction with it as well. Uh, I think with the hand movements here, I was just trying to demonstrate how I'd be uh, using using that, that wood at the back will be elevated. And then there will also be embankments built on the, uh, the, the larger wood at the front. Okay, I was thinking here about the possibility of storage, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. So you can actually store locos in there potentially uh, for moving it about with appropriate padding and protection around the sides. Uh, so just thinking of how I can best make use of the space. But overall, I'm really pleased with the way those baseboards have come out. Here's some pictures of the new, uh, part of the new fleet I've got anyway, the Hatton's Class 66s, which I've got uh, jobs for. Uh, I'm gonna be using the GBRF uh, 2, uh, the uh, Royal Corps of Signals and 66789. They're gonna be very much uh, put to work on the upper level quarry base section. Uh, running into uh, big cities such as Manchester as well. Uh, the other one, the DRS, that'll probably be more used on the, the lower level of the two sections, uh, used for things such as um, uh, potential uh, maintenance work, track maintenance work, uh, or container work, stuff like that as well. Okay, so lots to come, really looking forward to getting these, uh, these locomotives out running on some proper solid baseboards on a, on a real layout. The, the, uh, the lockdown layout was absolutely brilliant, but obviously it's made out of cardboard for free and it was, uh, it was a project really. It's, uh, it's enabled us to do some great garden running, uh, check out the lockdown uh, layout uh, build and the uh, lockdown layouts garden running sessions as well. I'll show you a bit more about that. But yeah, all in all, I'm uh, really pleased with the way the baseboards have, uh, have gone. I'd be really grateful as ever if you could let me know in the feedback in the comments below what you think of the video, whether you like the style of it. Uh, I have had tried to add a few things in uh, just to keep things interesting really because I know baseboards can be a bit of a dry subject. Uh, I have very much made just basic baseboards here. It's all been done before. There's loads of different ways to do it. 
you'll you'll find lots of them on YouTube. So uh, you know, get as much of an idea of different techniques, different methods, uh, as you can before you start your builds, and hopefully it'll ch it'll avoid uh, problems in the future. Um, the thing, the next series that I'm going to do on the baseboards, because I've got all of that elevation, and I may do a planning video as well just before that. That's going to make it much more interesting and much more unique to this particular layout that I'm doing, uh, because you've got that. It's going to present some challenges really, just having uh, very accurate uh, two track bed levels. But scenically, I believe it's going to make a really interesting feature for the layout, and especially that that river crossing. Uh, part of the layout, I'll be uh, I'll be using uh, lots of vertical extents at different points, and I'll also be having four main lines, so I can run four trains at any one time. However, I'm not going to have all of that lot going on all at once. It may be for some of the city sections where it's appropriate, but for other sections, it may even go down to just one single track line uh, for areas like the Peak District, uh, with a derelict line as well. So uh, all that to look forward to. I've got another scenic planning session, uh, which I've recorded. I just need to edit it. That's going to be coming very soon, next couple of days. And that's all about the quarry lines, uh, including Peak Forest and the lines and the uh, railway architecture and infrastructure around Buxton. So uh, that should be uh, should be quite good, quite interesting. A lot of bridges going on and viaducts going on in uh, Buxton because it's a very hilly uh, place. So yeah, if you've enjoyed it, I'd be really grateful if you could give us a thumbs up. Uh, please consider subscribing with the notification bell to be informed of every step along the way. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll leave you some images of those beautiful uh, free Class 66s from Hatton's Originals that I'm uh, really looking forward to putting to work on the new build. Okay, so that's uh, that'll do for me. So uh, keep well, keep safe, all the best and speak to you soon. Thanks very much for watching. This is Paul, UK Rails and More.